Hi, my name's Drea Roberts and welcome to Body Talks. Today we're going to be talking about the female reproductive system. So the primary sex sexual organs in females are the ovaries and we have two females have two ovaries. So these are our ovary. ovaries. I'll just put ovary here, one here and one here. And then this is where um, we produce the eggs. So at birth, we roughly have about 500,000 eggs in total. But over the course of a lifetime, only about 400 of those eggs will actually reach full maturity. Um, so the egg, every sort of 28 day cycle on average, a female menstrual cycle is 28 days, will release one egg roughly every cycle, that egg will be released and it will sort of be, there's a sort of space between the ovary and uh, leading into the fallopian tube. So this is the fallopian tube. The correct uh, term for fallopian tube is oviduct. And uh, eggs, the correct term, they're referred to as ova for plural or ovum if we're just talking about one one egg so the egg will be released and it will be sort of swept into the fallopian tube by the help of these little finger-like projections called fimbriae I hope I'm spelling that correctly. Um, so they're like these little finger-like projections and they help sort of sweep and uh, waft the egg into the fallopian tube Inside the fallopian tube or oviduct, there are hair-like structures called cilia, which act like little sweeping brushes to help brush the egg along the fallopian tube. And there's also the action of peristalsis that happens within the fallopian tubes. So these wave-like muscular contractions of the smooth muscle, um, the smooth muscle layer of the fallopian tube, Usually people have heard of peristalsis before, but uh, normally in relation to the digestive tract where peristalsis helps move food through the GI tract, but it also happens inside a lady's fallopian tubes to help the egg move along because the egg doesn't have a tail like the sperm does. The sperm in men have a tail which helps it, helps it swim and, and move around. The egg doesn't have that. It's much, much larger than a sperm because it contains a food storage um, and so because it doesn't have any help, um, any tail or anything, it gets help from the fallopian tube, uh, the action of peristalsis and the action of the cilia brushing the egg along the fallopian tube helps that egg to move. Um, here we have our uterus and the inner lining of the uterus is called the endometrium. Endometrium. So Every single menstrual cycle, we release one egg, usually. Sometimes there are two, and that's how you get twins and things, or a fertilised egg sort of splits into two, and um, you'll get identical twins. But usually it's just one egg that's released from uh, one of the ovaries each cycle. And then if sperm fertilise that egg, it will embed in the lining of the endometrial layer. So... There are various hormones uh, involved here. So there are two hormones, uh, two ovarian hormones, and these are referred to, I'll kind of put it over here. They're, they are called estrogen. Uh, I think the Americans leave out the O, uh, but estrogen and progesterone. So estrogen sort of repairs the endometrial lining from the previous menstrual cycle. And progesterone helps to sort of thicken and make the, the uterus more spongy and vascul vascularized. That just means supply with more blood vessels. So these two ovarian hormones are making that endometrial layer thick and spongy uh, in, in preparation to sort of nourish a fertilized egg, which we call a zygote. A fertilized egg is referred to, I'll put it up here, as a zygote. Um, and so there are also two um, pituitary gland uh, hormones. So two pituitary hormones released from the pituitary gland, which help with the female menstrual cycle, called follicle stimulating hormone, which gets referred to as FSH, and luteinizing hormone, which gets referred to as LH. So follicle stimulating hormone does exactly what its name suggests. It stimulates the follicles, which are little sort of 
sacs that sort of help provide um, protection to the growing egg. So they stimulate the follicles to grow. Um, and so one will outcompete the rest, and that's the one which will be released during the menstrual cycle. And luteinizing hormone, when there's a peak of this hormone, it causes release of the egg into the fallopian tube. Here we have the cervix, and it's here where um, the ladies, when they go for their cervical smear, they brush cells from the cervix and then they'll take those cells, they'll stain them with a particular dye to help visualise them under the microscope easier, and then any precancerous cells will be uh, visible under the microscope. So it's the cervix here, just at, at the opening of the uterus, where the cells are taken. And then here we have the vaginal canal, so the vagina, muscular canal. Um, so during sexual intercourse, sperm will swim up the vagina and then through the cervix into the uterus and actually sperm will go to both fallopian tubes and it's in here the egg will be fertilised. So the egg is not fertilised in the uterus, it's fertilised in the, the fallopian tubes or oviducts. And then uh, after a few days, it will travel along and embed itself into the endometrial layer at the endometrial lining. So that, that we call it a zygote, remember, if the egg is actually fertilised and it will just start uh, growing and divide, dividing exponentially to uh, like one cell becomes two, two become four, four become eight and so on. And eventually it's going to grow into an embryo and a fetus if fertilisation has been successful. If the egg isn't fertilised, then all of that extra lining of the endometrial layer will need to be shed. So that's what our menstrual period is. Um, so when a lady bleeds uh, each month, it's because uh, you're basically getting rid of all those extra blood vessels and cells and um, the layers that were getting ready to nourish a growing embryo if, if the egg had been fertilised. So we don't need those extra cells and blood vessels anymore. So they will be shed as a menstrual period. Um, so that's basically the main gist of the female reproductive system. I'll be doing a further video on the menstrual cycle where, where I'll go into a bit more detail um, about the different hormones and um, other graphs and things and which hormone peaks when. So if uh, you'd like to watch that, look out for my next video. If you like this video, please like and subscribe and let me know in the comments if there's any other videos that you'd like me to upload on different body systems um, and different anatomy. Just let me know. I hope that was helpful uh, and I'll see you again soon.